What's up, niggas? Vibra Nation, welcome to a late edition of the Java TS podcast. As always, I'm Janelle from HR here with Sir and Mr. Black via satellite. Well, I mean, all via satellite, but you know. Um, first things first, uh, we do on behalf of the Java TS podcast want to send our best to anyone being affected by the hurricanes that just hit Florida. Sorry, it's about to be another one, too. Two weeks ago in North Carolina that they were so not prepared out in Asheville. So anyone affected, yeah. we give our best wishes to you guys and your families that are affected. Uh, we do want to just give that little note because we I, it was a, quite a few people I didn't realize lived in Florida that I knew. And I was just mm-hmm. like, are you good? You all right? <laughs> like, I hit, I hit Midas. I'm like, bro, you all right? You going to be good? Don't fly away now. <laughs> You bought 110 mm-hmm. pounds. <laughs> Don't fly. But anyone affected, please, our best wishes to you guys. Um, other than that, I do want to thank everyone that came out for Bad Blood in New York at our viewing party at Le- at Legends. Um, so shout out. How was the how was the crowd, Mr. Black? It was good though. It was good. A little good turnout. It was it was good. Everyone enjoyed it. All right, good. So yeah, shout out to everyone that was out in New York coming out to supporting us and then shout out to everyone that ended up seeing us out in Atlanta for a hot oh, session. Shit. Don't do it. Don't ruin it. Don't do it. If you're watching it, you you're gonna have to put pause on that. No, That's- I'm not I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that Denzel Washington has joined the Marvel universe. Oh shit. Do what? What? He's gonna be in Doctor Strange 2 as Dormammu, some, something like that. I don't know. I can't pronounce it. You know, you know that niggas know I'm dyslexic. But nigga, nigga. Denzel, that's dope, actually. And I like Dr. Strange, as yeah. a matter of fact. Um, I still want to go see the Bat- the Joker thing, even though everybody said it was trash. I do want to still see it for myself. And I like musicals, so I feel like everyone that's yeah. bothered about also like musicals, but I like musicals. So yeah, but the thing about it is just like you saw it. No, 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 I, no, no, no. I'm gonna see it eventually. Right, probably on my website. The thing about it is like you have to understand what people's point of view. They saying that the first one wasn't a fucking musical. Why are you going to such like like a dramatic turn for how the series is? Like y'all, y'all niggas already in fucking hot water already with the rock dumb shit and all the dumb shit you did in the past. Hold niggas, on, hold up. Not too much on the rock. Not too much on the rock. Not too much on the rock. I'm already mad at him. We'll talk about it in a minute. I'm there, man. Like, kind of, literally, like, literally, you don't have t- t- room to make such a dramatic turn from the series. I get it. I get the concept of it. If it, the thing is, certain electrical properties you don't mess with. Like, you don't go too far away from it. Now, if it was a TV show episode, sure. But the whole movie, come on, dog. Nah, big dogs. All right, well, we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll come back we'll, around we'll, to that once, once we all watch it and we can give our honest so, feedback to it. I like musicals just like Janelle. I like I, yeah. I enjoy musicals. You gay, nigga. Um, Yo, let me tell you about your boy Michael Bossa because he's in the chat right now. Let me tell you about your boy real quick. So I've been wanting to low-key take him to like Broadway. I want to be wanting to do mad culture shit. And this nigga does not like musicals. He claims. And then had the audacity to say that he that one of his faves is Sweetie Todd. And I was like, Sweetie Todd is a musical, sir. Like, straight mm-hmm. up, that shit is a musical. So it's just mm-hmm. very interesting. People are particular about their musicals. But we'll see what happens. But all right, we won't waste any more time. We're going to do a nice review of Bad Blood, and then we're going to get into some This Week in Wrestling um, and then give our AEW, which I totally did not realize that that pay-per-view is this weekend. <laughs> Actually, tomorrow in real life time, um, with Wrestle Dream is tomorrow out in um, Tacoma, Washington. So we'll give, predictions. <laughs> we'll give our predictions out for that, and then we'll close out. But all right, Bad Blood. As I said earlier, myself, along with Sir Wilkins, was in the building in Atlanta, Watching it live and then cut. I literally got to my seat once the video package ended. <laughs> the intro, like I literally got to my seat at that point. Um, mm-hmm. just because six o'clock start time is is, is a tad early. <laughs> so I, I, so I so I got there late. How late, bro? I was pissed. So what um, did you down there? How did I get there before you? So me and Malcolm pulled up right, and then we're going to the me and Malcolm. <laughs> So we were going through the media part, and then and then the media the, the media the media part closed, and I was like, "Yo, nigga, what? 
And it, we were supposed to have until 6.30. So it, it is it is what it is. We we chilled there, and we had to wait. So I get there. Oh, thank you, Christian we, Bailey. So we sat down when literally um, um, when it, it, it literally was like a, a quarter into um, CM Punk and McIntyre's match. Niggas were bloody already. Nigga missed the intro. What were y'all doing to make y'all late? I don't know. The traffic was crazy. Well, time was good. No, I will say time was up. Like, it's time slipped away from all of us. Because, like, even when, so, like, for me, oh, I actually landed in Atlanta. Oh, thank you. Um, I landed actually a little later than I was supposed to because I was on the tar in New York for, like, ah, 40 minutes. But literally, we had brunch plans. And then we went back to the hotel. Like, we took the train um, from our hotel back to the arena because it was right there. But yeah, traffic was disgusting. It was a whole lot of other stuff going on in Atlanta that weekend. So it was just, it was madness. But the first match, as we all saw, was the Hell in a Cell match with CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre in their trilogy, their rubber match, as the people like to say. So I'm, um, I'm going to watch Adam Metry do like What were that. your thoughts? Like, did we bring back the, like, the creme de la creme of the Hell right. in a Cell? Let me go first. Said, I want to hear y'all experience since y'all were in the same exact room. Yo. <laughs> when I said that typically at the beginning of the matches, everybody usually walk around, whatever. Nah. As soon as the match start, everybody was glued like this. No one moved. None of that. Because it brought... And, and, and everybody would agree with me at the bar. It brought that old school feel to it. I'll say this again. CM Punk is that dude that he can't play every game. He can't wrestle every every week. He can't because he's trash. <laughs> CM Punk is opposite of John Cena. John Cena, he can't wrestle every once in a while. He got to wrestle consistently because when he don't wrestle consistently, his matches be trash. CM Punk is that dude. To me, now he's in the level of Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. Come there every week, talk, 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 but big time. To me, he ain't – it was John Cena had to – had the crown of big a, a big match. That was big match CM Punk, big match Punk because okay, my God. Angers. and the one thing I had to say about this match, they didn't wrestle. They were actually was brawling. Meaning that the moves wasn't as crispy. The moves was like it felt like a real fight. And the blood. Yo, I was even surprised that we. I mean. The way Drew McIntyre was leaking, it had to get. I think he had to get like over twenty like stitches. Mm-hmm. And it's had, to close and it's the gap. Like yeah, it was right, right here. Yeah. Yeah, like it was, it was crazy. Like mm-hmm. shout out to the Call Up Podcast, shout um, and everybody out. watching right now. I hope we, I hope y'all double screening us and smash down, but don't ruin anything for us. Like, do not, <laughs> no spoilers, please. But um, but yeah, no, being there, um. It was really dope. Like, I'm not going to hold you. Like, the atmosphere, the crowd was there. I mean, I was definitely 50-50 on them either opening or closing the show. But mm. as we will talk about the ending of Bad Blood, it makes a thousand and one percent mm-hmm. a reason why mm-hmm. CM Punk and Drew went on first. But no, the ma- like, everybody was locked in. Even when Drew came out, like, I know where I was at, even before Punk came out, the whole arena was ch- that was probably one of the loudest like chants of CM Punk like I've like I've been a part of outside of when he came back because mm-hmm. it was just like everybody was it was the anticipation and I definitely think they delivered on they checked every box off they made it that old school like it was gritty it was raw it was storytelling it, it was a really great way to end off their trilogy and their story and it's like it's one of those mm-hmm. things where like either let's say a year from now or a year and a half from now, they can double back. Like they can come right back around and do it all again. So like it was it was a really good like I was very hesitant on the cage. It held up, even though part of me wanted to see somebody fall off of it, but that's neither here or there. Mm-hmm. But definitely think like everything else when Drew fucking came fucking poured the fucking charm things. On well, on CM Punk out. That's where I checked out. I was like, if if Phil don't win <laughs> off of this, we gonna have some problems. But it was it was re- every part of the, it told. We the- 
necessarily about the winners. And it necessarily and, and it and it makes sense. So so what were your thoughts, even though you didn't see probably a fourth of the match, but what from what you saw, what did you think? Um right. so, that good. so that ma- so I get there, I get there late. I'm tight. I ain't gonna hold y'all. I'm a little okay. tight, so I'll pull up. But that's your natural face. Sh- shut up, nigga. Um, <laughs> uh, so I get there, pull up, sit down, and and everybody's watching it. Everybody in the arena is fucking glued, glued to the match. I think one of the biggest things was that it was legit sold out. Yo, yo, I kid you not. The fact that they opened up behind the the whole the screen, the whole arena was top to bottom. Them tickets, them ticket sales did not go down. They did not drop. They didn't do anything. When I tell you from the bottom to the top of State Farm Arena was hot. Like legit yeah. every all the niggas came outside. Every but. every <laughs> every every seat was there. I think another thing was um another thing was that it was it was just it was just like hot. Like it start they start off that they saw that pay-per-view and some people were a little mad that they started off with that, but I think it was the right move on, on my part. Um they did the right thing. Now the actual match now. Boy, these two motherfuckers here. So we ain't gonna done. wrestle. We ain't gonna wrestle. We're gonna scrap. Like my brother said, we are just gonna be scrapping. We're gonna do a couple of moves here and there. They were, remember that part where, where um McIntyre did a claymore kick and it landed on his back on top of the steel chair on top oh, of the yeah. steel step. Or when him and Phil went through the tables, I said, "What?" I they died multiple times, bro. There was multiple times during that match. I was like, "Yo, they're not, they're not getting up from this." Mm. And it was probably it's match of the year candidate. Yeah, definitely yeah. It um, mm-hmm. it's gonna go in one of my favorite matches that I've seen live. Fire. It's like, and 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 maybe you guys can. We'll go into this actually. You guys can give me like three matches that, that you loved seeing live, indie or or um or like uh wrestling or, or regular wrestling. So three for me, real quickly, is the main event night one of WrestleMania forty. Mm-hmm. Like that, hands down, is amazing. Mm-hmm. Kenny versus um Brian Danielson in Queens. Oh, uh, wow. um, I would even throw, and I'm throwing this one in there too. It's one of the three, one of my three favorite matches live. There's other ones that I've seen live that are amazing. Um, Darius versus Trisha Dora is, is a is a match that I love live. So, any what about you guys? Um, I would say the first match I gotta say is Big Time Yaya versus O'Shea and Job Slam one. Second favorite all time match is uh, you said three, right, Big Dogs? Yeah. Okay. Second one, well, dang, I never saw his match live, so I can't count like W D match. I never saw a lot of W D matches live, so it's gonna be all indies. Um, oh, Jay Bougie versus Encore, House of Glory. Um, and another one was um, uh, dang, it's a lot of lot of lot of favorite matches I have. Um, the third match is oh, um, P J Savage versus Face. At um BCW, uh, false car anywhere match, and that's it. Um, I've been to way too many shit to really give a top, but the first three that come to my mind, yeah, first three, um, Bianca and um, and Sasha at WrestleMania in Tampa, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, it probably wasn't the best, but it's probably the most memorable one. Um, well, for me, actually, um, Elimination Chamber Survivor Series 02, the first one. So that was my oh. first pay per view. You saw that in person? Yeah, 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 that was my first that was in w- New York, right? Yeah, at the Garden. That was the first pay per like big pay per view, um, after 9 11. So, like, everything, like, like going into the Garden was so different. Like, it was like going through the airport, like, how you go through the airport now was like, how like all that started then. Um, so that's second one. Um, the third one. Um 
I don't know. Like, there's so many. See? The other one that comes to my mind, honestly, is Cody and Seth in Dallas. Mm-hmm. But I just think it was more yeah, it was more because it de- I mean outside of them being, you know, having really good chemistry, but it just was just the environment that it was in, like it was Cody's first match back in WWE. Like mm-hmm. it just was uh, it was a moment. Like if you were in AT&T Stadium, you understand that, that was mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. moment. So mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. are the, the three that jump at me first. Um uh, but there's probably tons and tons and tons of other ones um that I'm don't have to bring because that's either remember to talk about, but um, oh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so we had the Hell in a Cell, and then after that, because everything actually comes we have very blurry because I was very exhausted. Um, what else, what was the next match after that? Was it the girls or was it Finn and um, and Punishment Martinez? Was, I think it was Finn and Punishment Martinez. Okay, so they had their match. It was a solid Martinez. match. It was. It was, it was, it was uh, I knew who he was going to win. Because, uh, yeah, I think, to be honest, like I told y'all before, like I'm kind of, I was over the Judgment Day shit, low-key, until last Saturday. <laughs> For some reason. So, all right, so Punisher Martinez won. Well, <laughs> Damien Priest won. So we go on to the girls. Oh, well, Bailey and, and Naya. Happened. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, Naya, that look was everything. Everything. Bro. I was just like, yes, bro. But bro, um, no, 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 I no. Just, no. Let's, I, stay on, let's stay on a little bit. Let's stay on this a little bit. Delicious. How you talk about the ending of that? Delicious. I like the so I I I felt I honestly thought Tiffany was on casting, so them keep teasing it. Um, I do like. Um, and I, I, I definitely think Naya retaining was the right move. Yep, mm, I agree. I don't think that. <laughs> I think honestly, for her, her bless you. Thank you. Um, okay, I was just like, are you all right? Um, I think for her, and I honestly think it's been a really great year for her and her comeback and her winning the title, her winning Queen of the Ring. So I definitely think her keeping the title for right now is what makes sense. Um, but then we had um Rhea versus Liv. Um, yeah, that was cool. and so here, so that's why I said I was totally like over Judgment Day because I was just like, all right, can Liv and, and and Dom do something else, and then let Rhea do something else? Like, let's just let's figure this out. But the returning of Raquel Rodriguez Gonzalez made me check back the fuck in. Like, I was just like. Oh, even though, even, even with the box ending, because it gave Spanish. another player. No, no, no. It gave another player into the situation. It's another. It's another person in the uh, the unknown got in the unknown variable got entered into the equation. So like, you don't know if right now, yeah, she rocking with Liv. You don't know if she has one turn on Liv. You don't like. You don't know mm-hmm. how that's gonna uh, work. And I think it gave a refresher to the whole storyline that they tell him because. I totally forgot that Rhea fucked up Raquel before. And she got that's how she got out. So like both of them now on this like revenge tour trying to take out Rhea. Like now it makes it adds another layer to it for me. So that's why I'm like, okay, we can we keep this going for a little bit longer, but soon enough we got to wrap this up and move on. Mm-hmm. But so um and Goldberg then, coming back. Oh my god, that I will say that pop. Atlanta definitely showed out for William Goldberg. I will say. I mean, Listen. I didn't, but. Listen, I just want Gunther was, to do him that he did Undertaker. I just want Gunther to beat him. But exactly. as we are Goldberg talking about. is one of the greatest WC wrestlers of all time. You're right. WCW he's, standard. Yes. He's in the top 10 WCW wrestlers of all time. I don't think top 10. Probably top five. And he ain't five, four, three, or two <laughs> at all. <laughs> but um, no, no. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. For how WCW used to wrestle for, okay, for me is he's one of the great WCW wrestlers. But I think that he's not a wrestler; he's just more of an entertainer. That's it. Who cares? Like, he's a, he's like still he's on, the he's greatest still... WCW. Um. What's that thing called? Sightsee? Um, um, attraction. attraction. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I will really agree with you, and I think it was because of how he was presented with the with the undefeated streak. So I can totally understand the attraction part in it. Yeah, but William Goldberg don't know. know how to wrestle. William Goldberg don't know how to wrestle. That's the only wrestle. That's the only wrestler I know where him fighting in the streets count as a match win. So. Oh, my M- MDB is, is crazy. First match of the night got a black man in it. Watch the IWC trolls try to spin it into into a negative. MDB, nah, 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 no spoilers. No, no, so, we are not watching. Hey, that hey, because we're talking about bad blood and we're black. What did you think about um, Triple H's um, answer to the question that was asked to him? Well, first of all, let's talk about your question. Let's talk about your experience then. If yeah. we're gonna go with that. No, 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 no. Let's, let's talk about this first. <laughs> um, so I, everyone I, I, knows I love me some trip. I ain't, ain't none that nigga can do wrong for me. However, comma, I nigga, just wish. Nigga, put the comma. I wish <laughs> it did not say I don't see color. That was the only thing I was like, ah, very tone deaf for you to say. Even though I know the intent is not ill whatsoever, it's just, but my it, thing is this way: it ignores. Yeah. Oh, ignore, let me finish with Mister Blanco. Saying right. you don't see color, it it ignores our experience as individuals of color, and I get it as uh, like as him being COO and him his mind focus is talent, no matter what they are, black, brown, blue, red. His focus is on what is the best, what's going to be the best talent that's going to be put on TV and translate on TV. Like, that's his focus. But in saying I don't see color, it's just very tone deaf and very like, bro, I'm going to need you now. I'm going to need you to stick to the numbers. <laughs> don't answer no more questions. Just don't. Because, okay. like I said, I don't think it, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I did not one think it was ill intent. I don't at once think that Triple H is a racist. I don't think any of that. I just think it was a very ignorant thing on his part to say that he doesn't see color because for us, we're always going to see that. And you saying you don't see it, it 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 could it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths that you ignore in their experience. So that was just my thing. I just wish he ain't say that, but I understood what he was trying to say, but he ain't say it. But go ahead. But at some point, you got to take accountability for your action, Triple H. I get what he's trying to say, 100%. I see what he means. I see where he was going with, hundred percent. But you've been in wrestling business for way too long to say that dumbass answer. <laughs> way too long, way too long. And some of your actions has not been the greatest. But when you really look into his past, the nigga buried everybody when he was world champion. Everybody, everybody who wasn't w- like who like who was in WWE for a very long time, he buried them. Mar V D. From um from fucking um Booker T, Goldberg, Chris Jericho, yeah, Kevin yeah. Nash, like the list goes on. How many how many guys that he buried? Yeah, the black guys usually stand out because especially the Booker T storyline is very tone deaf there too. You understand? He does a lot of shit that typical white guys do, tone deaf stuff because they don't see past it until like it's Scott Steiner. Thank you. Like you, they don't they don't see past how they feel. Uh, uh, uh. No, y'all yeah, dragging it. <laughs> so I, un- I understand what you're saying, and that's why I think sometimes he may not be low key the best, <laughs> the best person to be talking like that on that type of thing. He cares. He cares. He cares. He, he can't be saying that. So, you feel me? And after how we hear stories about his boy Shawn Michaels being racist towards black people sometimes, he looking like cool. And then here comes the conclusion. Some people are like, oh, well, they doing all this NXT. He there's a lot of black talent. Because at the end of the day, I can kind of see what you say you don't see talent because those are very talented black people that he promoted in NXT. But there's a difference between NXT and WWE. So it's but easier. Is there? Huh? Is there now? I mean, I'm talking about when he was in charge. You feel okay. me? It was a difference. You feel me? So like my brother said, is it's cool to make them champions on NXT. Because it's like saying that, all right, cool, you're acting supervisor, but you're not a real supervisor. Because nobody would take the championship um, seriously until uh, years later. Nobody took that shit seriously. And I'm talking about the general audience didn't take that shit seriously. They saw it as a joke, it, like a um, um, demotion and everything. So 
I can see it. I can see it always. I can see it always. I like. I, um, but I don't know, son. Um, this is my thing. It was completely, com- absolutely, completely tone deaf. Yeah. And so, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak from experience of being in, in that room uh-huh. as a black man. So, homie that mm-hmm. asked him, he, me and him always talk all the time every time I see him out on, on these at these events. And when he asked him, I was like, oh, shit. He asked him, let's see what he answers. And you ever get secondhand embarrassment for somebody? For who? Who? Like when somebody yeah. does something, you get somebody secondhand and, and then they don't they don't feel a way about it, but somebody else do. Yeah. So for me, it was a piece of of a little bit of secondhand embarrassment because I was like, "Yo, nigga, you did not just say that this 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 was not your answer to this." That was one. Number two, a, a, like, and, and maybe I'm getting emotional about it. Maybe I'm corny about it, but it was like my heart dropped. I was like, yo, that's how you answering this? But the other part of me of being a 30-something-year-old black man in America, I wasn't surprised that was the answer. Thank you. Because homies, and, and respectfully speaking, homies a white dude from, um, is, he, is he from Connecticut? No, he's not from Connecticut. Mm-hmm. That, 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 is he really from Connecticut? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What up, Tony? So he's oh, from he, he is? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's from Connecticut. Like he's from the up uh, the northern part. You know, he wrestled, but wrestling is predominantly a white, a white, a white shit. It, it, it's, it, it's predominantly a white shit. So and he is right. He's thinking business. Mm-hmm. He's thinking business. And a lot of times that business sometimes blinds you to, to the bigger picture sometimes. Oh, of, right, under, yeah. of, of understanding. The complexity that comes with race, that complexity that comes with ethnic backgrounds. So you get so blinded by the business side that yeah, that is your answer. You're gonna say because all I don't see color, I see dollar signs. But you Facts. need to see you Thank need you. to see color to better understand how to maneuver and showcase the talent that you have, which uh-huh. is now and we talk about it all the time. Um, there's so many black people being injected into into professional wrestling nowadays. So you have to understand that there's black people here, there's white people here, there's there's brown people here. So we have to do a better understanding of representing them because if you don't see race, you don't see somebody struggle. All right, and then you don't you don't understand how they you know how how creative they want to be or how they want to express exactly because on the main stage. Because you can't you can't showcase Bianca Belair the same shape the same way you showcase Charlotte Charlotte Flair or Liv Morgan or, or Carmella or something of that nature. There's there's not ways that there's different ways of going about it. And am I gonna say he's a racist? Nah, I'm not gonna say that. But at the same time, it the comment was a, came off ignorant. Yeah, no, nah, I, I had to say I was like, baby, no. Like, like I was in the room because so. I don't know if you guys watched the um, press conference. Yeah, and he yeah, said, really. and he said, "I'm gonna give you a raise." I don't know if you saw that part. A raise to who? He was talking to me because <laughs> he walked in, and everybody was like, "Like the everybody was dead in there." Like everybody was acting bad, bougie. This is me. Yeah, let's go. And he was, he was like, "I'm gonna give you a raise, bro. Thank you for that one." And then, Woo! And we talk about Triple H. Yeah. Triple H. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then what he said, when he said, that's why Wilkins was second hand and like, damn, bro, we just had a moment. Well, why did you exactly. do that? Exactly. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. And I, for this means I've never been in that room. Are you allowed to ask a follow up question? You know how in the NBA, NFL, when in the press room, let's say how that is, Shams, right? Shams is talking to LeBron, and LeBron answered the question. And usually Shams would be like, yeah, I understand that, but it's kind of a back and forth. Are you allowed to have a back and forth? Not really, because they move really it's fast. Good. I was about so, to say the time of that. There's no the real things, time. Yeah. So one That's of the things I that too, is hold like on, hold on. That... So, so one of the things that I noticed, and this is um, I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with with Denise. She does a lot of like um um dressing content. She's really big okay. in the industry. 
she does this ill shit that nobody peeps. So the way she gets multiple questions off, she'll ask three questions at the same time. So well, if so, she'll go, hey Janelle from HR. All right, what is your how is Jabra Slam 5 gonna look like? Cool. If Jabra Slam 4, what was your feelings about Jabra Slam 4 now going into Jabra Slam 5? Do you think Jabba Slam 5 is going to be the last show that you're going to do? So she'll ask three questions, and all of them will be the follow-up, and the person has to answer those. So that's how she... But that so, makes sense with you, because when you know you don't really have much time to ask questions, that, that makes sense. So she does. So she's ill with that shit. So she's ill with that shit. And she going, from what you're saying, she's she already had the follow-up questions there. She's like, my nigga, I'm gonna get I'm getting three questions out. I'm you spending five content. minutes with me. I'm gonna get this content. But on top of that, like, and I feel like a lot of times, this is what I notice. A lot of people be such an awe of these wrestlers. It's like when a black man talks shit about Obama, Obama this, Obama that, when it's he Obama, oh my gosh, hello King. You feel me? Like they get so shocked to her, like they forget what they have to say. You feel me? So that's how I feel like. Triple H didn't get pressed the way he got pressed. Like, like I feel everybody was like, oh, you know, Chuck shows emoji. You feel me? And no one else would say, yeah, I understand what you did. Nobody said, yeah, but what you just asked was kind of blah, 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 blah. Nobody pushed back on him. Everybody pushed back on him literally on the internet. That but shit does not matter. I don't think... They don't, have, was, they don't have the space for that. They don't the have space the for that. That's, for what, that. That's, what she, that's what Janelle was saying. That's what I'm saying to you, too. There's not the space for that where... And you also got to remember, it's a, it's a time constraint. Like, literally... It's a, it's a group situation. Had it been, like, an interview, like, a, like let's say, a Chris Van Vliet, or, like, even... Like, a, like if it was a one-on-one -on -one interview, then that's different. The fact that when you're in a room full of other people that want to ask questions and have other things to talk, and they have other people to come in and talk about, you don't really have the space or the time but to. Really go I hear you though, but me as a black man, if my brother asks that question, and then me as a black man, I get picked up. Fuck that shit, nigga. I'm not worried about asking him. Oh man, how you feel about tonight's pay per view? Da -da -da -da, this third, third. No, I'm gonna ask. Yeah, to answer that question, what do you mean you don't see no color? Blah 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 blah. I feel like y'all don't work together to like y'all didn't work together in that moment to really press over that question. But the thing about it, so what I'm trying to say, it's it's the moment. Some people are not thinking like that because he asked a very profound question. He he answered it. But sometimes people's like, oh, shit, he answered it. And then, and then they're like, OK, let's get the next question in. And there is not many black people in the room. To right. So, honest, how that may, so how that may hit people, it, it may not hit the same for everybody else, but for the majority in the room. They may not even see what he said was wrong. Or they, or they might not even get called upon, and 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 and, and like and and and, and 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 like a lot of times it's just like it's just a flex. Oh, I was there. I asked a question. I don't want to ruin my chance for next time. I, I don't mean, think which, he. I don't think he ruined his chance for the next. No, time. no, I mean, he's saying general. anybody else. Which I mean, which is their prerogative. I mean, when you're in such an industry like this, like you, you gotta, you gotta play the game. Like, unfortunately, and sometimes there's certain times to have those conversations and to rebuttal those things. And then at certain times not to, and you just, it's, it's a fine line, unfortunately, within this little, like, social media and all this in media type of situation. It's a fine line that, you know, you got to kind of walk along, but you also got to stand on what you believe in. So had somebody else in the room felt the way, they could have asked the question and maybe they didn't. Maybe they will save it for another time. You just, you just never know. So it, it, it's, yeah, we, we want people to be like, so what you just said was fucked up. Yeah, we do. But that, that's not always the space or the time to do those things. And that's just the, the catch-22 and all of that. So, like, I, I get what you're saying. I, I understand what you're saying, absolutely. But in those spaces, it's a time and a place, unfortunately. And that's just kind of what it is. So, it, And it doesn't mean that people don't feel away, or it doesn't mean people may not, you know, touch on it later. But it's just sometimes in that very moment in that room, you got like 30 minutes and you got like uh, 30, 35 people in the room trying to ask a question. Understood. But okay. Um, I mean, like, right back. Oh, go ahead. I was going to end it off. It's just like, I'm in it. You feel me? 
I'm in it. And I just feel like a lot of times it's just like, yo, like, it's all about, it's, like, I always compare it to how the rap is or whatever. It's just like, there's no real regulation. Because at any point, if I say something that's a little offensive to one person, I'm bad for the locker room. And then by the time the story hits me, it's a wholly different story. So it's kind of like, I agree, it's a real catch 22. Straight to as a black man in the industry, you have your own. You don't want hurt. It'd be your own that will sell you out. It'd be your own that will kick you with you, all of that, to sell you out just because they feel like, oh, this is my dream. I don't care. And I'm going to, you know, kick, kick like, basically, per stop anybody out of my way. And everybody just really by themselves. So I get it. You know, it sucks. because Yeah, it, it's, not, it, it's, not a, it's not always a fun thing. And it's a, it, in all honesty, it, all, it goes back to the politics and wrestling. It, it's not always fun. Even when we're in when we're in room and rubbing elbows with certain people, it's certain things that you just gotta be mindful of because you just like shit. <laughs> I I don't want this to be you know that that type of scenario, but you know I feel like in everybody's own way, you you know what you, you know what you stand for, and that that's what at the end of the day that is really what matters because then it shows your character, it shows who you are as an individual. And yeah, some people, I mean, I hate to say standing on business, but some people going to be that, and some people are just going to take different routes to getting to the same place. And I just see it so much in all the industries I'm in. It's just like, when I see niggas talk wild trash about somebody, a boss, whatever, whatever, I was like, did you tell them this in some type of way? Nah, I just shrugged my shoulders, took my pay, and left home. And I think you actually do it again? Yes. And I'm looking like, and be the first one to be on some like, you know what? This is a conversation I'm just gonna leave it alone because we're gonna have the same conversation forever with no different results. Literally. So this is why I came to conclude I'm gonna end it off like this way. Like, I ain't worried about what Triple H does no more. I ain't worried about Tony Khan does with the black talent. Because there's plenty of um, independent companies who does well with the black talent that they have. So the only thing I'm gonna focus on is the people that who wanna showcase us, put a put the title on us, make us feel like champions. I'm no longer gonna entertain people that who's not for us. If you're not in the village. Fuck you. I, I'm not I'm not worrying about you. Yeah, and I mean that's just honestly that's how you keep your sanity. Like I, nine times out of ten when I just I, I gotta stay away from from social media because I'm just like, you guys are ruining my fun in this. So like I don't I don't want that. So no, you just you do everybody at the end of the day, you gotta do what's best for you as the individual. So if exactly. you're taking a stand saying like, yo, I'm not focused on the negativity, I'm focused on, on the things that serve me. And that works for me and what mm-hmm. I got going on, then that's fine. Because I feel the same way. People be in an uproar about black talent. But yet when we when Black Russell Fest was a thing, where when where was niggas at? When we had when we did the first job of saying, where was niggas at? When um when she did Black Girl Magic one and two, where was niggas at? So like when they did the show in Iowa for Juneteenth, where was niggas at? You know what I mean? So it's like we sit here and you know we chastise WWE, AEW, all these other promotions, but then don't take it upon ourselves to, to pour into the community where it all starts from. All these niggas that the pool that they get the people from is from the indies. So when you pour into that, then you can be like, all right, then you can start seeing the change and start seeing the things being different. Because yeah, the whole like, oh, they don't book black talent on the main roster. When Kofi Kingston was WWE champion, was niggas buying Kofi Kingston t-shirts? Was niggas going to meet and greet? This nigga went to Jay Uso, and the line was wrapped around the whole motherfucking building. So, like, at the end of the day, you got to look at yourself and be, you can't just sit here and woe with me. We, the three of us, we don't sit here and be like, woe with me. We saw that talent wasn't being represented, so we did job us in one, two, three, and four. <laughs> so, like, at the end of the day, you got to be a part of the movement if you want to see the true change, can't like, sit there and cry and be like, "Oh, they don't, they don't put us on." But do you have put other people on? Yo, thank you. I like, yo, look <laughs> at like, yo, look at like I say, all these excellent black talents. So speak through and through. Go ahead. So speaking, speaking of, of black what? people, speaking of black people, I'm um, Cody and um Kevin. <laughs> so we're gonna end it. So let's end, let's wrap up <laughs> bad blood. So we ended up. Uh, um, <laughs> listen, it's okay if you were sick, it's fine. Um, so Bad Blood ended off with um, Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fox 2 Bloodline going against Tony Luther X and 
And see, Lord that's another thing too. Say. That's another thing too. I get the black pass of what, what a person makes, like where you could dance. And, you know what? I'm off of this. Yeah, Cody, uh, Cody Reynolds. I'm gonna call him by his government. Cody Reynolds. You know that was legit. That was a good match. I definitely enjoyed the bar <laughs> was crazy. <laughs> No, you know what it was. The match did what it was supposed to do. It told, it gave another chapter in page to you turning the page into the bloodline storyline situation. So I absolutely appreciated the match. Let me explain something to y'all. I like, and I heard. So I when I got back to New York the next day, I watched because I wanted to hear commentary. Mm. And I will say the band definitely echoed on TV. Because a lot of people were like, oh, it was so bad. But live, like, in the building, that shit was the hardest thing Cody Rose could have ever done <laughs> in terms of his entrance. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. And the, and the and I love the fact that they were invited because they did it themselves. Like, that school, which is the HBCU out in Arkansas, in Pine Bluff, of all places, one of the games, they did Cody's theme song, and he caught wind oh, of it. Oh, that was them! Yes, he caught wind of the, it went viral, and he invited them to do the song at Bad Blood. Because everybody, you know, certain people that go to HBCU, go, why you didn't get this band? Why you didn't get that band? Why you didn't? He got the band that actually did the song first. So that's why that happened. So, so. that goes back to what you said earlier. Not waiting for nobody to validate them. Yeah. They did it off the strength of their shit is hot, and then what happened? People caught on. So, Yo, we were at the Giants like game. When I went for my birthday, they fucking played Cult of Personality. I popped. I thought Phil was coming out. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. So, like, a lot of the sporting events, you know, football, basketball, baseball, they're starting to really dig into some, some wrestling shit. So, um, so yeah, so they played that. So yeah, every time I go to the Devils game, they 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 play wrestling theme songs. See, so it's <laughs> okay. So, but but to answer that. The Great White Hope brought out the HBCU band and and, and, and sprinkled black culture. And what the band is, that's what caught that's what that's what caught me off guard because I was like, oh, the band thing. I mean, we've done the bands before, you know, when Bianca did it. We've done bands before, but they had the, the major red. I said, oh shit, this shit is real. No, so it was I, so will, cool. I will say it was a great show. Um. It, 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 it was the match. The match was really good. I did appreciate because they made this pay per view very feel like it was a bigger deal. Mm-hmm. So it was that when I tell you it was the hottest ticket. Like there were people I knew in Atlanta that did not go because of how expensive them tickets were. So let me ask you a question: Did I did I go to the strip club after? No, I didn't. Have no, I, I, yeah, my flight was at five forty five. I took all this <laughs> shit and never never went. Well, I, I mean, I, I just I went to the strip club in Miami back in July, so I'm okay on the strip club front. Nobody talk about Miami strip clubs. Everybody talk about Atlanta. I want to. Well, actually, Houston strip clubs is, is actually a lot better than both, in my personal opinion. But do okay. they have black people? Most yeah, people have black think, people. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't want to see a bunch of light bright. I want to see a variety of chocolates. Well, first of all, Vegas can't be choosy. A stripper's a stripper, so there's that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's why. Like, no, 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 no. Difference between a white stripper and a black stripper. No, Two yeah, but strippers. you said light right. So at that point, no, no, you no, 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 really no, no. particular. I want to <laughs> go to the strip club and I see a rainbow of of of, of chocolate. Okay, her. But no, we yeah, this there, there wasn't enough time. Like, had we had we gone, had we all stayed in Atlanta at least three days, then I think we would have made I, the. I, I had no time to do anything else. But there was no, yo, we were honestly, it was exhaust. Even though they paid, like we got out the arena what ten ten thirty. Yo, our, I had to be at the airport at three thirty in the morning. There was nothing I was doing so, but going up off the house. I I going to bed. Oh, oh! I thought I had that. You just um left to the airport. Oh no, that's too early. Never mind. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was staying by the airport, so I was okay. But um, mm. we did see the return of finally Jimmy Uso, so everybody can shut up. <laughs> Jimmy Uso returned. It's not his fault. Um, it's his father's fault making up rumors. Yo, calling it up. Have it. Yo, what's wrong no, with him, son? Yeah, that what's nigga is working. Yeah, he's fucking working everybody. And and when he was talking the shit about Jay, I was just like, all right, you doing the most, man. I can't. No, like, I get it. You don't understand? But I'm looking like Booker T, I mean, Sue, Rakishi, 
You've been in the wrestling business for all your life. All your family's in the wrestling business. You know better. So shut like like like, like so be I better. get it. Like, like, be better. Like, right, like I get it. He's a pops. Like this is this is like one of the first few pops I've seen in wrestling that's really on it on it by his kids. I I love it for you, Papa. I love it for you. But at the same exact time though, the certain things you just don't say. Cause you should know better. Don't say, Oh, pray for oh oh pray for my son. Oh you know what's been going on. You know wrestling's been that, dying. Yo, that, on, that, shit though, was reckless. that shit was reckless. I was like, yeah, what the like, fuck? Like, like, like your bro, like you know how wrestling business are. Like we just lost Bray. Like, um, literally, like there be times when I see RP rest, I'm like, yo, is it someone I know? Is it someone I, I, I ref before? Because at any point, like, like people don't understand the impact you take on your body. Yo, who knows what kind of long term effects we have on the body? That was Rakishi. That was lame of you, dogs. That was yeah, lame. no, it was, was corny. corny. That was, was corn, just, bro. bro. Let them, let them cook. Like, let the, let it rock out. So Jimmy returned. Uh, right. Payment. Hug had a very beautiful moment with his cousin in the ring. And his and other cousin is the back him. dancing. Yeah. <laughs> a Solo, I love you. I love you, Solo. Solo, I love you, Solo. Everybody in the back having beef in the main event. See Jay like this. Yeah, yeah. Dancing with yeah. his idol. Dancing. That nigga was in, uh-huh. in that suite. That shit was so funny. I was like, what? He was dancing while so he was getting on. Down. I Y'all mean, and never Jeff Hardy can do black it. women on SmackDown like this. Listen, don't talk about it. Let's wrap this up so we can all watch it in, in peace. It um, is amazing. So no, then, no, no. I, I, listen. So there was this guy who posted about how he never seen wrestling like this before. When there's exactly. this many beautiful black on. women on wrestling television. Because there was always that token or maybe that two. Zola. Now they got so many. I'm not even watching. jacking it because the NXT did the, the shit at the UFC thing and they had that ladder match. Four out of the five bitches was black. So I'm not jacking any of this. However, comma, I am glad to see that tag team match happening because I popped really, really hard. I was like, oh my God, this is going down. But, um, as Mr. Black is taking some time. Um, so at the tail end of the tag match, you know, Bloodline trying to get Cody back. And then, you know, Roman and Jimmy did the baby face thing to do and help Cody. And then Roman gave, once again, I will say this again, Roman gave back Cody his belt <laughs> as he should. And then not but five seconds later, the motherfucking ground shook in that arena. Like, I was scared. I don't know about you when you say that, but baby, I thought the shit was going to collapse. Like, I was sitting there, I was holding on to Danny like, oh my god, girl. We about to die. Because you were hot. The whole arena, no, no, it wasn't even, I mean, yes, but no. (laughs) The whole... (laughs) So for me, I'm shook. Like I've I've only experienced that maybe two or three times in wrestling. The floor shook when Dwayne the Rock Johnson decided to show himself and, and this show us year, a So so <laughs> oh this year, this year, I've seen the Rock right. so many times live, and it's the happiest days of my life every time. So the first time I saw the Rock live. Shout out to WWE PR for hooking a nigga up. Cause I emailed them. I said, nigga. I didn't say nigga, the email. So I was oh, like, I, I said, I said, yo, I'm gonna need this ticket. I know it's sold out. Can y'all do me a favor? And I and I put in the email, I have never seen the rock live. Can you make my dream come true? And shout out to WWE because they emailed me back and said, We got you. Here a ticket. Oh, so, that was nice. So the first one was it M- was it MSG or was it Barclays? Barclays it was Barclays. Mm-hmm. I got there one minute before he went on. One minute. Now, the the next time was at Mania, and honestly, and the Raw after Mania was it the Raw after Mania? Did I go to the Raw after Mania? No. I did. Yeah, that's what I say. No. Everybody come back after yeah, yeah. Sunday, but. I saw him. I saw him at 
at Mania. Did you wait two hours to see him at the yes. at the? And I saw him at, really? at Fanatics, at Fanatics Fest, that they, they, they had the day before the uh, meet and greet, whatever. Three times, I said three times. I saw him in one weekend, and then I saw him earlier that year. I was good. I was good. That was fun. I was good with me in the rock. Oh. Mm-hmm. I was good with me in the rock. Mm-hmm. And then you want to keep watching. It, it happened. If you some yo, I like it was October fifth. It happened. Because, it was I, because people were talking about it, so people people were like, "Oh, it's gonna happen," but then some people were mm-hmm. not. Like I saw Chris Van Vliet earlier that day. Me and him and me, Malcolm, Muscle Malcolm, and I were talking about it. He's like, "Nah, the Rock's not coming." But Muscle Man Malcolm was like, "Nah, he's in the area. He might show up." But, but Chris, yeah, when we, when we left New York, Atlanta, in Atlanta, that was the first thing somebody hit me up telling me like, "Yo, the Rock is in Atlanta," and I was just like, "What?" And I was just like, I believe it when I see it. It's cool because I don't want to, you know, hot shot it. Yeah. But, um, so, 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 when, so, so I, I didn't think he was going to show up. When that music hit, yo, out of body experience. <laughs> boy, boy, I think I came on myself. Wow. I think That's I came. Crazy. I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to hold you. I think, I think, I, I screamed. I screamed. And I was just like, yo, this is my guy. My guy is here. But I'm still tight at him because I'm hearing he might not come to um WrestleMania, WrestleMania 41. Yeah, so apparently the word on the street is, is that his movie schedule is supposedly preventing him. He's running away from the grind. Well, <laughs> He's running away from the grind. His movie schedule is preventing him from possibly participating in WrestleMania next year. So we He makes see. the same movies all the time. Right. <laughs> yeah, he got actually. Wait, is he supposed to? No, is he? Yeah, he in that Santa Claus movie that's coming out. I don't know if you want to see that. Shit look hard. And he's gonna play the same exact role. He's Shut like up. Mad he's same as Santa. The same exact thing. Yo, come on, son. I like you. A hater. You a hater. I'm not a hater. It's yes, you are. Like, this is why that Batista. But I mean, if you, him. listen, if you were an actor and you knew your craft and you knew the genre that you were good at, wouldn't you not stick into that? <laughs> No, he he, he a hater. No, don't don't, don't worry about. It. He's a hater. John Cena, John Cena Listen, he does the same. Dumb. You're a hater. Like, like if John Cena ever got into All like time. a whole shit, I'll be like, sir, let's double back. <laughs> let's You're a hater. You're this a hater. Rock. This is the Rock. You're this a hater, rock, right? Oh, let me make um, let me make Rampage, saving the world, right? I'm fighting like big ass apes and stuff like that. The next movie, oh man, I'm fighting like robots and I'm saving the world. Same exact premises. He a superhero, my nigga. No, he's he a superhero. That's his thing. He's a superhero. At least, at least the Fast and Furious. So what movie? Do something way different. Okay, but so y'all don't like that. What what movie? What movie genre would you like to see the Dwayne the Rock Johnson try? I like the old Rock. Well, like how he was in Gridiron Gang. He was in Faster. He was in Walking Tall. He was in the Fairy. He had range. No, he oh, doesn't. Niggas in the, in those things. No, 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 no. So, no, so no, hold no, on, no, hold no, on, no, hold no. on, hold on. Let's rewind. Let's rewind. Because now when he did that, that two fairy shit, Fire. niggas was sitting on that. But that was great. I like him like that. Whenever he went like a dad with a little girl, I was like, that's oh, that's Fire. Fire. But but not everybody fuck with it. So like, you know but hold on, doing? hold on, hold on, hold on. Because he found his lane, he's one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. Ben Diesel is higher than him. Oh. No, he's not. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Look it up. No, Look he's not. Up. No, he's not. But I also will say, I also will say though, The Rock doing ballers was definitely different. You, you see, you see, you see, that wasn't The Rock. That that was still the face of walking tall. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Right? Let me check no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, this nigga, this, 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 this nigga, I hate us, son. Are you still watching this all though? Oh, last year, last year was was Adam Sandler. The year before that, Tyler Perry, Dwayne the Rock Johnson was the highest paid man in Hollywood three years in a fucking row. Put some respect on my man's name. Put some respect on my man's name. You look at him and put some respect on him. So, um, so why was the Black Adam? He was to say DC, right? But he did it. No, but but I, I hands, though. Oh, you, had it. You, you had to go there. 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 Like had to go there. He Fuck almost killed nigga. the Fast and Furious um, franchise by trying to put people against Vin Diesel. Really? But that's your man's, though, right? It is my man. That's your man. It, it is my man. It is my man. What up? 
What up? What up? What up? That's your man's though, right? <laughs> Haters gonna hate, B. Haters gonna hate. I'm not hating on The Rock. Yes, I'm you are. Saying that. Yes, you are. The Rock, the Rock, the wrestler, I love. The Rock, the actor, no. No. Oh. Because you a bum nigga. You a bum nigga. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, so Dwayne came out and, and showed us that he can count to one to three. So he did one, two, three, and then walked right back out. <laughs> but the night did not end there. So he went live on Instagram after he went behind Gorilla and said what he said. And oh, final boss activated type shit, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then backstage... The second most dangerous place in WWE is Cody Rose's tour bus, where him and Kevin Kevin Owens molly wop the shit out of Cody Rose at his tour bus. And yeah, he, the didn't fans, to, he didn't have to do that to him, son. That shit was bad. Yo, he didn't have to do that to him. And his he got anger issues. Like that? He got anger issues, dog. Yo, I, and I low key wonder. I hope tonight on SmackDown we un- somebody tells us what the fuck was said because I want to know. Hmm. They, they they didn't reveal it. They did it, yeah. They just fought before the match, yeah. Ooh. But um, but all right, Nia, that was bad blood. And then we got Monday Night Raw for for those have I've realized that now until the end of the year, Raw is two hours, so that it's been a very interesting transition to say the least. What did you think about it? Uh, from my point of view, is no for being the just the two hour thing, just watching it for two hours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. um. It's okay. I don't mind it. It just, you know, once you, you, we've watched Raw for three hours for so long. So it's going to take a little adjusting for not only them on their end, but us as the viewer to like understand the content in two hours. Cause you know, we've, we've been taught three hours of Monday Night Raw for so long. So um, I think it's, a, it's definitely, and they've admitted it's a growing pain. It's something they have to, you know, it's a different format now with the two hours, so you got to be mindful of that and try to, you know, because even with the whole 10 woman tag match, I was like, Y'all knew better than this. <laughs> Y'all knew better than this. That, 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 was this wasn't it. that shit was trash. I was like, This was not that the answer. Was this wasn't nah, the answer, but was... and that's what I'm talking about too. It's just like, man, everybody see that shit. Three hours was good. Duh. It was just bad. It was just bad on me, Vince McMahon. And like, People like people always say, oh, two hours got nothing. Like, yo, you gotta let go of Vince then. With Triple H doing uh, with, with the three hours, I feel like every hour, like eight o'clock going to nine o'clock, you get a main event. At nine o'clock going to ten o'clock, you get a main event. And the last one into like about to leave, you get another main event. You get three main events on the show with quality matches. Why the fuck people complain about that? Well, because well, people are just gonna always complain, you know. People in like the press conference, apart. he. In the press conference, he did say it is hard to convert from three hours to two hours. You could he tell. said it's going it's going to be a challenge. And then we also that we also gotta talk about this. And I don't think a lot of people talk about this enough. WWE, just like NX, just like AEW, has a massive roster. Exactly. So now you cut down the show to two hours. You cut down the show. SmackDown's only two hours, so you only got two shows a week. That's two. That's two hours. So it's only four hours of of programming. Well, four actually, hours, yeah. six because don't leave out NXT. No, NXT I'm talking about for the hours. main roster. I'm talking about for the yeah. main roster people. So you have that. You have only four hours now. Like like, like Janelle, I'll I'll throw you some bail on this one. You can send some people down to NXT, get a little love down there, but usually it's bigger stars that go down there. Now four hours. Pay per views are only are only usually like five matches, six matches if, if he's feeling if he feeling, feeling, he's feeling frisky. Yeah. So this shit is hard now for a wrestler to get TV time. Uh-huh. And on top of that, don't forget with the pay per view is there's a lot of ads in between matches. So yeah. So that, like a match well, is like so like with minutes. the pay per view. Is if you don't have if you pay for Peacock with no ads, then you don't then you don't get that. But if you it's the same exact thing though, like but you get like instead how... of the ads, if you don't pay for the ads, you get in the video package that everybody's seeing in the arena. Yeah, but that's still taking away time for the performers though. But because... you still gotta have a lead into the match. If it's no, a no, pay no, per no, view. No, 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 no. All right, all right. I understand what you mean though. 
But compared to, hey, I'm talking about back in the day how we grew up. Hey, you had a lead into it. Let's say how that it's um, it's Queen Afro versus Thunderlips, right? Wow. Um, back in the day, oh my gosh, Thunderlips and Pink Afro about to go at it. Promo package into the match. That was at least give and take. Let's say for argument, say eight minutes. Now is you got the promo package, other stuff they have to sell. So to, to the eight minutes increases a sixteen minute gap in between the matches. Uh-huh. You feel me? That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the promo. I'm talking about the other shit that they add on until what the app where you don't pay for it. Well, when like how you don't pay for the premium one. It's just like it takes away from the pay per view because that 15 minutes, like that extra minute you add on to those those those, those, or those uh, promos and commercials, could be added to another match. Yeah, but then you don't want to. But then it, it, you know what it is. It's just a fine. It's 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 a fine balance that you got to. That it's a groove that they have to adjust, and it's not. It is going to take time. Just like the new guy on Raw, it's going to take him some time to well, adjust nice. and, and nice. get. And, and get used to how to actually tell the story, not like how in football or any other sport. So it's just is going to take an it's an adjustment period. He's good. And no, I, I to be honest, I I like him, and I like the fact that there's certain little things that they do on Raw and SmackDown that are very sports geared, and like even down to like when they put the graphic at the bottom, or they you know do a fact, or they do say. The the little details that they've done Shout to give it that sports that. feel, I I actually I actually like even to the point of like they put the location on the upper right side now. <laughs> I, I just that. noticed that they the other week. That. Yo, I just noticed that. And I was like, I like that because I don't be knowing yeah. where these niggas is at. Yeah, no, nah, um, they've been doing it ever since like forever now. No, like, it's not forever. That. Yeah, like. The chat, like, if everyone said that, we're alive from the Coleman Washington, da, 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 da. they've been doing that for shit for years. And they put it on the right side, like, even the video games, they'll tell you, oh my God, live from whatever, whatever. Yeah, that shit is old. That shit is nah. mad old. It's new for me. So, and I like it's it. New so, for there me you too. Go. <laughs> See, yo, like, you I never noticed that. You don't notice stuff like this. I got to pay attention. They do it every week. Nah, because I'm not looking up on that side. <laughs> like, I'm not. I don't think they've been doing it for every week. And I don't either. Like I literally just noticed that a chat. few weeks ago. Chat. Right now, the, right now, the chat will tell you they've been doing that for years. The video games have been doing that. Whatever. Go watch like matter of fact, go watch old Raw from a year ago. The beginning. They said live from da 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 this that and they put it right on the side of it. That's old. Ooh, Beetlejuice is on streaming now. But um Beetlejuice what? Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, the new one. It's on streaming. Which one? The new one. I know, but we're streaming. Oh, so you know, F- Fandango has an app, like Fandango at home, and you can rent it. Well, then. Or buy it. Well, it's not like on streaming, streaming yet, because I don't think I don't think it's hitting max until like next month or or, or early December. That's what she was asking about, because I think it's going on max, but um, but I don't think it's till next month. But um, so yeah, so Monday Night Raw, the Fallout for Bad Blood. Um, we saw once again, we, well, we ended off with Sami Zayn versus, um, Gunther for the title. Uh, we saw Jay Uso open up Monday Night Raw in an intercontinental title shot against Xavier Mm -hmm. Woods, which was really good, actually. Um, Um, I like the, I like the slow burn of this whole New Day situation. I am going to hold on. Yep. Storyline, okay, the storyline into the slow, but I like that, but I like the match so much because... It's again because of this new format to get more money though. You it, 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 it's like it's more into AEW coverage. You feel me? Meaning that majority of the matches is in the little window during commercials. So by the time they had it, you go back, you look like yo, James who did two moves and he won. I'm looking like yo, let me explain something to you. I've never appreciated picture in picture until NXT went on CW because my nigga, cause that that shit is different. Because now that they're on CW, they can't. I don't think they could do picture in picture. So like, it'll go on commercial and then come back. And it, I mean, they'll show, they'll recap what you missed. But it's just that's a different, that's an adjustment in its own. Like, so picture in picture, it, you know, it ain't that bad when you really look into it. But picture in um, picture is great. I'm trying to think when what else is on Monday Night Raw real quick. Um, CM Punk gave. 
his state of the address, we'll see. We won't. We probably see Phil to a Survivor Series, so I ain't worried about him. Well, well he needs. He needs to rest his body. He just he yeah. He needs to sit it on down. He needs. I'm to loving. I'm loving. Um, Seth Rollins being back. That's my guy. Um, Bronson. If you have not watched the Chris Van Vliet interview with Bronson Reed, highly recommend that. What did he uh, say? Bron- Bronson Reed. So he talked a little bit about how he spoke to Drew when he. Um, one thing I remember. He spoke to Drew um, when he got released. And Drew and him spoke about, because Drew had that experience himself. And he told him he was just like, his goal, Bronson Reed has said his goal was to come back. Like, it always was like, you know, I got released. I'm going to, you know, work the indies. Because he was working, he was at Hog. He was working indies heavy. And he was like, yo, you know, I'm going to do this heavy for another two, three years and see what happens. He didn't think WWE was going to call him back under two years from when they released him. Like, he said it was, like, 17 months, 17, 18 months after he got released that he came back. So, Mm. and it was because of everything in between. Vince leaving, the Triple H getting on board, and Triple H reaching out to him and calling him back. So, he talks a little little bit about that. (laughs) Um, But him on fucking social media, (laughs) posting the red dot on Seth Rollins' face, (laughs) had me weak. I was like, I was like, but it's very, and it's really good to see Seth back. And then I like the, the image of him and and Punk because it, they, they, they keep reminding y'all this ain't over. We're going to come back to this. Stay tuned. And I appreciated that. Um, it's, it's going to be one of those well done matches. It might rival to what CM Punk did with McIntyre. Yeah. No, let's, because let's really think let's really think about this. This McIntyre feud has been going on since it probably since started the, since January. Since Royal yeah. Rumble. No, I, I, I would even Survivor say series. since Survivor Series. No, I'll series. even go back to Survivor Series when Drew fake walk out. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things where like they doing this long term storytelling which you gotta appreciate um also, shout out to AEW for, 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 for um, forgetting that um that that new TV deal. Let's keep yeah, wrestling so alive. I think what the TV, <laughs> so I think the TV deal is what three years, one eighty five, something like that. Three years, what one hundred and eighty million? Yeah, one hundred and eighty million, something like that, around that, something. Like um, that. but with that, um, Everybody I was believe shit. Rampage, off. Rampage Everybody is ending at the end of this year. Um. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then they said um, sometime next year is when I think the pay per views would be on Max streaming, yeah, at Max, a discounted yeah. price, yeah, which is Listen. crazy. At a discounted price is wicked, but <laughs> just put that bitch on there. But but they said that HBO. I mean, sorry, Max don't have the technology yet, so this is why it's coming later on too. So they said on top of that, they're gonna add old stuff too. Onto the max. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, well, that's the well, that. that's the well, that's the future now. Like, hell, like I, it, it pains me to say this. Television is dead. Yo, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yes, it I is. I don't think so because I don't think it's dead, dead. But I think how people view TV is always yes. going to be. Oh, but that's an that's that's thing. what I'm that's what I'm saying. Like that's always we're not we're all not honesty. I had to get, I had to go old school to get CW. Like I got a fucking digital antenna. That's why I got watch YouTube. CW. That's why I got YouTube TV, baby. Yeah, but see, no, I'm not, I'm not paying YouTube TV price. And and there's certain channels that they don't have that I was just like, it don't make sense for what me. What channels they don't, don't they have? Um, they have a few ones that I was just like, I have on my sling, and I play, I pay almost twenty five dollars less than what YouTube TV is. So I, it, I, I guess for watch... me it was a budget thing. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get this little seven dollar digital thing on TV. Yeah, radio's not done. And R- not in all dead. honesty, it, no, it no. made it made me appreciate like old school how you used to watch TV because when niggas don't got internet, what the fuck is you watching? But it's also <laughs> like y'all make that TV is dead though. But that's us. But middle of America, they still watch television. Middle of America, like they still listen to the radio. Some people, say, my son, my son, show like radio is dead. But every car, oh, let's put on the radio. Let's see what radio have to say. Yeah, 
You may not. But watch I it, think like, like that whole like radio, like you know how hot radio used to be. I feel like when we were growing up, it's not as hot because you get a lot of this. You get like the serious XMs, and you you get the people that's you know putting their stuff on they they shows on different other platforms outside of just radio. So like, it's not that it's dead. It's just that there are just different ways of that's watching how the time is. TV. But like yeah, but like that's how the time is though. It's just like back in the day. People would look at you crazy. Cable? Why do they pay for cable? And it's now look, like, like, like rabbit ears and that's it. Now they got cable. And then c- cable evolved into what it is right now. Because but, at the end of the day, if because if it was still was still dead, TV and all of that, people would not invest into these shows they have on regular regular television. But like, they don't have TV. that many shows on regular television. Yes, they do. What do you mean? Yes, no, they, they don't. Do. Just because you don't watch it. Oh, like what? Channel two, four, five? Yeah, they do seven. No, it's very, it's very limited. It's very nah. limited because, I, but, but the thing about it, I'm gonna tell you this: it is dead because I'm, I'm, I speak to NBC, I speak to people, executives from from television. They don't invest. They, they don't invest into television as much as they did before. Majority of stuff that money that they invest in now is done on live sports. So a lot of shows you see. Is going to be on streaming. Like you're gonna get your basic channel that you that you talked about two, four, and five, but it's very few shows on that. You have your daytime television, which is the, the, the talk shows, like you have Jennifer Hudson show, you have Drew Barrymore show, stuff of that nature. You had a few prime slot shows, but if you look at cable, like TNT, for instance, there's nothing on that station. Well, that's but why those, but but guess what? But, but hold on, let me finish, let me finish. So majority of television doesn't have original content. Majority of television is 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 sports and reruns. I don't think that's based on a television show. It's just based on how like they're not trying to pay people originals. They not like it's example, not it, it's it's not that, and it's also the hold fact on, that hold on, hold on, hold on. We, hold on, hold on. We, but the thing about it, most people cut the cord. Majority we, of people cut the cord. Yes, but you're not getting to my point. Is People like us who have all these access, cool. But middle of America is still key. A lot of stuff they do, a lot of stuff they do, is geared towards middle of America. People who are watching it, people that who are in the mountains. Yo, a lot of places in the U.S. is not developed how it is in New York. There's a lot of third world countries in in the U.S. So they depend I, on the television single. They depend I, I, on I, under, I, under, so like, I understand. I understand that. Hold, hold on, on, hold on. on. I understand what you're saying, but majority. Of what executives are looking at now, they that's why that's why WW, WWE and AEW got the deal that they had. The main reason why is because people are not watching TV the way that that they are anymore. There's no destination television. This is why it connects back to wrestling. Because before, when we were growing up, you were eight o'clock come, you watching this show. You had no choice but to watch that show. Yes, I understand middle America is not as advanced as we as other parts of, of America, a lot of them, but a lot of them are cutting the cord. The reason why WWE got the money that they got is because it's a live sports show. Yeah, but I'm not the, denying hold, that. Hold on, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. There are a few shows that are pulling heavy ratings over a million a week, like WWE. And the fact that AEW got that deal is because. They are live sports is where the money is at. Majority of that. The reason why WWE doesn't even get more money is because of the violence on there. So what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is when it comes to this industry, the world that we're in right now, TV for the most part is on life support. Because there's no destination television like there used to be. Yes, you can say Channel 4, the main channels, those four main channels may have shows on prime time. But when it comes to cable, this television in general, there's very few, very few original content. And that's the reason why WWE and AEW got so much money. Because live sports is the way all these companies are going right now. That's yeah, where they're I'm not saying that. I never said that. I was doing my argument. Oh, heels! Oh, heels! Oh, heels is gonna be uh, season two streaming. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so what's your point? And we can move on. You can say your yeah. point. We can move on. All right. So, since we're talking about TV and how I had to put digital TV on, 
um, CW this week, NXT, their second live um, on CW that was in St. Louis, Missouri. Shout out to well, who I know as Malachi Jeffries, but to everyone, Javon Evans, for main eventing against Randall. Um, his dream match was, and it was so dope to see, even though, yeah, everybody's going to talk about how he missed the spot. Oh, well, shit happens. It's wrestling. But it's still a really, really great opportunity. It was a really great showcase of him. Um, they did open a show with Trick Williams and Jay Uso. Um, and then, you know, a little Ting Ting Wesley came out trying to challenge for the title. So we'll see what happens next week when they do a triple threat for the number one contender on NXT. Um, you saw Tony D'Angelo become the new North American champion. Shout outs to Oba Femi's fine ass for being the longest reigning NXT North American champion of all time. Of all time. So shout outs to him. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see what he does next. Um, did I? So personally, I did not catch AEW because this week AEW was starting at nine o'clock on Tuesday. So, y'all want to tell me a little bit about what happened? Who, what, when, where, why? Uh, it, was not, it was nothing much. Did you watch it, um, Mr. Black? Man, what was I doing? Oh, I, I, I was at practice. Listen. But I feel Listen. like that's the it's the craziest part because according because you know once again ratings is is a thing I don't really it's not a hard on for me but apparently this week's well last this week's AEW was the lowest rating AEW Dynamite in its history in five yeah, years. Yeah, but it wasn't a, it was not on a it was not on a very traditional night. Um, it was going on the same exact time as 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 um NXT, so. Again, and AEW has not been interesting building up to it, but I bet you the pay per view going to sell. Which that's is yo, so that's so that's what it it, it that's what bothers me because it's like I want to be invested every week, I want to be hyped for the pay per view, but like for this to be your go home show and it to not really even no one's even talking about it or even hype about like I feel like there's no hype to anything they've done in the last like six weeks, and I don't know if it's only a fault to creative i'm dead ass looking at their marketing team because like anytime and once again it's not to do an od comparison but anytime there's a schedule change or something with wwe them niggas are slamming that down your throat pause that this is happening this is what's going on i didn't know aw was on tuesday until tuesday <laughs> like there was nothing that went on either social media like i didn't catch it but and apparently, hundreds of thousands of other people didn't catch it either. But they're gearing up to Wrestle Dream. Um, Darby Bus Brody. Um, I saw the the Willow match. Um, that she won. She won the gold. Which gauntlet. was obvious that she was gonna win. But if yeah, you're but, not winning but, the title, then y'all can miss me with it. <laughs> like, don't do but, it. But that was the that was the main thing that I saw. Um, my brother said like. You can't get mad at them because it was Tuesday night, no, 9 p.m. Uh, it's the same it's, thing they did last year. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's a Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Like, uh, baseball baseball playoffs is, is the same every year, so... But it's still... They're just, they're, you expect their ratings to go down, though. Yeah, but not three, under 400,000, though. Yeah, but no... That's, that's they're not crazy. hot right They're not hot right now, though. That's so what, what do you think... So what do you think would reignite that hotness for AEW? Just not... have better storylines. Advertise it better. Y'all come off like y'all throw stuff to the y'all come off, y'all throw stuff into the wall and that's it. It doesn't really stick. Like I feel like somebody somebody explained this very well. Is AEW is like watching um AEW is like watching. What did you even say? I forgot what you said. Oh my gosh! Um, watching WWE is very episodic, meaning yes. that how you could be invested in a very a long year. AEW is very like pick up and play. Like any time that you watch it, any time you have a, a good match, but there's no storyline or substance to it. For example, Ricochet versus Will Ospreay. They Baby. could have <laughs> literally milked that for a whole year. You feel me? They could have won championships, this, that, and third, but they did it. They rushed it. Now it's just like, all right, we have it. What's next? 
Nothing is and, and I AEW. absolutely agree with you on that. I feel like if that was the most talked about redream match that once Rico Booty got signed, that that's what you know niggas wanted to see. Y'all could have dragged that. That could have been dragged out. Y'all could have did that at World's End. Y'all could have did it next year for ever like Revolution. Build it up. Even even if you waited to full gear here, like I think to have that match on Dynamite, it to be the end the way that it was. Now you're entering Takesha in it. And it's like, unless you're going to pull the trigger and put the belt on Takesha, then what are we doing? Like, what? what is the game plan here? And, and it's just, it's frustrating. Even with Bobby Lashley, everybody hyped for him to come. I'm looking like, all right. Like, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. They're going to form the Herb Syndicate. Oh my okay. gosh. And I'm like, okay. And after that, shout out to Dwayne. He's on here. I had a conversation with him and I said it the best. I said that, yo, Y'all leave WWE, complain about how, like, yo, this is it, this is that, this is that, so complain about how it is, but then go to AW, the same shit. Mercedes Monet, you was the boss. Now you're the CEO. Okay, Ricochet, you could have took this time and reinvent yourself. You don't, like, you know what Ricochet did? Was Ricochet hate the WWE? Now, now that he's Ricochet in AEW. Mm-hmm. Nobody does nothing to involve the character in AEW. This is why I look at these older guys, like, Shout out to like Chris Jericho. You may talk shit about him, but Jericho always try to reinvent himself. To reinvent them to stay on television, but people and miss I, that. And I will actually piggyback off of the Jericho thing because everyone does kind of like get on Jericho. But we also got to keep in mind like Jericho will pull people into whatever. I mean, it, it is the Jericho vortex. It is, but he'll pull people into what he's doing that that would be sitting and catering. Like, had he not picked up Brian Keith? And been like, yo, you're gonna be the bad apple and take him under his wing like that, you wouldn't have, that wouldn't be a household name right now. So Thank like you. I totally agree with you on that. And that's my frustration with the whole like hurt business 2.0. It's like, listen, if y'all if y'all niggas ain't gonna pick up and grab young talent and help cultivate that and it being an act it could be a, a evolution type of situation. If y'all not gonna do that and I'm I'm good. Like Look, well, I, I, well, good. do you think Look, they're gonna well, work listen. with 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 Swerve? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm hearing too. But overall, it's just I don't like... think so. I think Swerve should stick to Nana, and 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 that, that should that that shouldn't be a but thing. But I hear you though. But I'm gonna say like it is. Name me a fire um, MVP promo. Well, I mean, if you look back on the day when he was U.S. champion, I will not hold you. I'm pretty sure you could find one. <laughs> but the fact that how that you have to say that oh, back in the day, yeah. But I'm talking about now. Him, him as a manager. Like, I think he's done a good job as a manager. No, I'm I, not I mad about him as a manager. Didn't you that. I didn't ask you that. My question was, name a five promo from him as a manager. But the thing is, so, so this what is what I I'm mean saying. by that is just like he's cool, but he doesn't add that sizzle to a lot of these wrestlers. He don't. Like I really feel like how that I I these are my boys. You don't say nothing fire on the mic. There's nothing casting, none of that. No, nah, no. Nah. Barely like you see him talking. He been by himself talking. You felt his passion. You felt every word that you want to hang on to it. But now, but now, like, look at MVP. Look at look, like, like, yeah, he's three guys. Just like the the one with the best promo skills is probably by Lashley. But outside, no, 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 no. no, Shelton Benjamin, Shelton Benjamin, Shelton Benjamin cannot carry a promo at all. Like, if if it's out of the three of them, MVP is going to be the one to talk. The yes. best out of all of them. Yes, but Bobby Lashley know what he has to do. He like at least he's a better promo. At least he's like, dang, Bobby Lashley, I get that. Nah, shit. I, I'm no, not even. No, I can't no, check. No. no, I don't agree with that. that, that no, no, nah, nah, you bugging. You bugging on that. You bugging. The fact that you bugging. The fact that you said Bobby Lashley cannot cut a promo. Y'all smoking ill ass dust. No, he, like that's just the truth. From a like, bomb shelter. Like the only like low key when Roberto came back and he was with um when Leo Rush was his with his mouthpiece that made sense. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm looking like how that Bobby Lashley don't cut bad promos. It may not be on a, like a level of an eight, but it's it's good enough. Meaning yeah. that it's a seven point five. Maybe for you, that's okay. If that's good like for I, you, that's because, okay. Because like how I know that how that he don't cut bad promos. You want to Ben Sanders on the show, especially my brother. He would have been called that out, but he never did. So but we that's never how really talked about Bobby and his print promo. Because I didn't say bad, he cut bad I promos. Said that. I would have been like, yeah. no. but that's what I'm saying though. If it was so bad, you've been talking about it. 
No, but the thing it's about bad. It, I, I don't actually want to talk about it. You know, honestly, because it's bad. What am I talking about it for? Yo, Me personally. Bro, y'all talking just, about like, yo, bro, you talking about how, how bad, like, let's say my name is on the mic. You talking about how bad Paige is on the mic. You talking about all oh, these other wrestlers battle on the mic. So stop the cap, dogs. It's I'm not, not the cap. The cappers. I'm what, what not. I, what, what I'm I don't saying, think Bobby Lashley is good on the mic. And there's that. And I could, I could have said, I've, I could have said that years ago. I could have said that now. But I, I'm happens, not saying bro. I personally not saying he's bad on the mic. I said he's not better than MVP on the mic. That's what Listen, I'm saying. MVP to me is just like you don't see nothing fire on the mic. It's very like on some like I right, okay that's right. It. But guess what? He's probably the better out of the bunch. So that's again that's what, that's so what it this is. This goes back to my point. Name a fire MVP promo. None of y'all can. What's name a fire it. Bobby Lashley promo? That's not my point. That, that's, no, according to y'all. According okay. to y'all. According to y'all. I never said that he made five promos. Stop stop putting words in my mouth. I didn't put person, words in your mouth. I just asked you a question. For the person who is the mouthpiece of a group, name a fire promo from him. This goes back. My point was, yo, they're not going to do much in AEW. I mean, that's something we all can agree on. Like, I'm, I I get that was the point that needed to be made. I absolutely agree with you on that. The reason why, why the reason, which is why I said, if they don't grab younger talent that's already been in AEW that needs to be established more, then it does not, it's not going to work for me. Sean, I hear you. MVP and Matt Hardy was fire, but it was heat. But I said, name a fire MVP promo. So this is my thing. This is my thing. Hold on. So so this is my thing. This is my personal thing. I personally think the reason why the Hurt Business or Hurt Syndicate is not going to do well in AEW because it's going to fall at by the wayside. Yes. They're not because the thing about so this is it. You have Bobby Lashley if he's coming. Supposedly he's coming. You have Bobby Lashley, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin. These niggas is twice the size of most of the main people on that <laughs> on that roster. Okay. That's number one. Number two, the shit's gonna look crazy when they start losing to, to people half their size. And I <laughs> and hold on, hold on. I know it's wrestling. I know it, it's where we're put we're, we're, we're shutting off our brain and, and making it, you know. This is a different reality type of thing. But this shit's going to look wild. But <laughs> nah, 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 nah. You sound wild because Bobby Lashley lost a lot of people half the size of WWE. No, I'm, and, I'm, and, just, and I'm just saying that's going to be the majority of their thing because they're not. So there's no as, other big guys in AEW's with your brother. So that's, one, that's number one. Number two, they don't feel like they just debuted those two. It doesn't seem like a big deal. Thank you. That's my biggest thing right now is that the people from WWE who have debuted on AEW, it doesn't seem like a big deal. You guys talked about one thing that was super important, and, and, and I was listening to what you guys are saying, and, and I was 100% agreeing. That's why I didn't say anything. Ricochet, let's put away his, his, his crappy promo skills because <laughs> this shit trash. His cadence is, his cadence is, is all because his cadence. He's, he he doesn't sign somebody that that, that that could that could beat somebody up in a fight. You're just not taking that shit serious, and that, exactly. that's my problem for that. So, and he's not witty enough, because when he was cutting a promo talking about he's Kobe, the follow up line was not hitting. That's number one. <laughs> number two, when you watching when you watching this, and you guys said it the best. This was supposed to be a dream match. Ricochet versus Will Ospreay. This was the match that wrestling fans, not wrestling entertainment fans, not sports entertainment fans, not people who just like to watch wrestling, people who love wrestling. They have spoken about these two motherfuckers going one on one for years. For over five years. That's for all five years been talking about. To the point that Will Oscar was calling this guy Ricochet off, was calling him out online. Building Even this when he up. was in WWE, he was yeah. tweeting this stuff. He was tweeting about him when he was in WWE. He is Ricochet is phenomenal in the ring. Him versus Will Ospreay is the Dragon Ball Z fight. This is fucking 
Cell versus Goku, Cell versus Gohan. This is Majin Buu versus Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan Goku. This is I'm talking about. This is Ryu versus Ken. This is epic fucking fight. Mm -hmm. And that shit didn't feel like a big deal. That's the problem what I have with these debuts. This shit does not feel like a big deal. Nigga, I just paid you a shit ton of money. I want you to come in here. This shit feels like a big deal. Now, I'm going to connect this. I know I'm going on a rant. I'm almost done. Y'all remember the Vince doc? This has been spoken about numerous times on different yeah, documentaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember on the Vince doc when Kevin Nash was talking about when Vince brought in Mike Tyson for the Stone Cold and Shawn yeah, Michaels yeah, yeah, match yeah, yeah. at WrestleMania? Yeah, yeah. I didn't get there, but you could continue. But it's been talked about in other documentaries before. But I don't know if you've seen it. They were talking about how they made that shit feel like... Granted, it's WrestleMania, but it felt like a huge yeah. deal. Yeah. It yeah. felt like this was when they knew that WCW was done. Yeah. When that match happened. And, and, and the reason why I bring that up is because over the past year and a half, there hasn't been anything on AEW that's felt like a big deal. And maybe I'm wrong. People in the chat can say something about it. But I've been watching it, and I'm just like, yo, what have they done that you're going, holy shit? Uh, I got to watch I mean, Hangman maybe, versus Swerve. Maybe Max, maybe Max and Osprey, they did, I feel like, did make a big nope. deal. Nope. I didn't feel a big deal. But the one thing I will it say, you know like what? A, it you felt know like what? a bigger deal than anything else they had got going but, but on. You know, but you know what? I will give you something. You mentioned something, Mr. Black. Swerve and Hangman. Well, yeah. That has been the only thing over the past um, year that's no. been a big deal. Sting last match with Darby Allen to put on. Bay I'm not Bay counting that one because oh, you know why? Yeah, that's a I retirement match. Okay, that's a okay. retirement that, match. Um, I gotta say, um, Mercedes Money had heat coming in, but it died down too quickly. Nope. Nothing no, Mercedes even has when, done. Even Wait, after on, that no, first no, night, no, 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 no. nobody not, cared. No, 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 no. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying she came think. in. Yeah, I'm saying that she, she came, came in. She came. She came in yes, with, but with some type of love. Okay, I see yes. what you're saying. I see what you're yes, saying. That's what I'm saying. That, and I feel like honestly, I'm gonna say it. A lot of these wrestlers haven't evolved. When I watched the Ricochet versus Osprey, I feel like Ricochet. I feel like Osprey had to dumb down his style because this is why I feel like Osprey is better than Ricochet because Rocks um Osprey, he can wrestle anybody. Different styles, power moves, all of that. His promos. He talked how he talked. Before it was trap. He talked how he talks. Fire, son. And in in ring match, he does so much. I feel like Ricochet is so stuck on that Dragon Ball Z. Bro, we're all spraying on Super Saiyan God right now. You'll sit on Super Saiyan 3, bro? Yo, come on, dogs. And like that's how I feel like a lot of people are not on the same level as far as in ring, not on the same level as far as promo wise. And Guys who know what they're doing, they always ride to the crop, but I feel like there's certain people who's better with guidance. And AEW feels like, unless you know what to do, unless you have the like niggas who support you, you're not going to get far in AEW. You get a nice I agree, because you can see niggas ain't being produced. You can see, you could, you could tell. You could tell and that niggas is not having conversations uh, prior to stepping out of Gorilla. So, so what is wrong with that? I don't understand why people because are so that against that being doesn't, produced. That doesn't equal... Unfortunately, it does not equal good TV. And I think that's No, that no, sometimes, no. Okay, and I think, go ahead. Sorry, my no, sorry. No, I think at times, yeah, you want to see wrestling and you want to see that. And that's why sometimes it's better on the on the indies when you're there in person. When you're looking at on a, on a TV show level... If there's no story, if there's not something connecting to something, if you're not making me feel like I need to tune in the next week to see what the fuck happened, you can have all the great wrestling matches, but if that shit don't translate as a good TV show, that's where you start to lose people watching. Because the biggest example this week... Still watching it? When they had Kevin Owens and the Cody shit backstage... And they had whoever they had, whether it was a plant or whoever they had, they didn't have actual WWE cameras. They had people, people was cameraing. When that shit hit Saturday night after, yo, everybody was, I gotta watch SmackDown. 
because now you you got to tune in and see what the fuck what the fuck going on. What they end up with, what AEW fails at doing is they fail at making you feel like whatever's Thank next you. is a big Thank is you. a big is a big deal. Because if if I'm sitting here and this is if this could be Daniel Bryan's last match this Saturday, and it don't even feel like a big feel, that well, yo that shit don't make no sense to me. But the thing about it, I don't understand why people don't want to be produced. That's no, how you I, get better. Because because for, because because for for instance for instance for instance, if I'm the Booker, my vision is this. So, why not say how we're gonna go do this storyline? You should be working. You should be putting your heads together to evolve the storyline. And mm-hmm. I don't care. Like, listen. The other day, I had this um coach on my team, right? Uh huh. And there was this there's this seminar, this sales seminar. I wanted I wanted the coach to go to. The coach was like, "Yo." I don't feel like going. It's my day off. I don't want to go. I was like, I understand that you can clock in for it, but I want you to go. The coach goes, nah, nah, nah. I'm good. I'm good. I was like, yo, listen. You are a phenomenal coach. But when it like, like if you are a boxer, you would have a glass jaw when it comes to sales. You get it knocked out easy because of sales. You need to get better at that. So we're going to go and go to people. That's going to produce you to help you get better at that. Uh-huh. Now, the reason why I bring that up is somebody like Ricochet, he's like, he's, no, I even, I remember interviewing him. He said, I want the mic more. Cool. Uh-huh. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's also nothing wrong with somebody producing you and helping you say the right thing so you don't sound like a clown on the mic. Because, for instance, uh-huh. In sales, a lot of times they give you a script to read, you memorize it, you mm. find out the key words, and then you say it so, so, so you can pick up sales easier. Yeah. yeah why yeah. can't this nigga Ricochet read off? Or, or, why, why are so many wrestlers, not, not just Ricochet, is mad about reading a script? My nigga, you already in tights throwing fake punches out. <laughs> you can't read a script? Because honestly, though, son... What I realized being around a lot of these wrestlers, they feel like they the shit. They don't need it, What's right? That? And but, like how that. When I heard stories, my certain wrestler was well, like how certain wrestlers. You know what? I tell you off camera. <laughs> a particular wrestler did something, and, and like it really just like put a bad taste about him on his mouth. I'll tell you later. Ooh, because ooh, because like... because so that's what that's what I'm saying. It's like all right. Why can't you read off? Why don't can't you read? And the thing about it, it's not the end all be all. Like with Vince, it was the end all be all. Like. Nigga, I want you to say this. But which with, with 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 Tony, all right, let's produce. Let's work together. All right, Ricochet, I need you to come off as the heel in this. Osprey, or you come off as the baby face. Let's work. Well, that's why right. why you 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 guys even mentioned this. You guys said, and we spoke about one of the biggest, one of the biggest deal that one of the biggest ones that, that we saw this month this year Wrestling was the, the biggest up, matches bro? was Swerve. And Adam, Adam Hangman, right? Why was that a big deal? It made you fully invested in what was going on. Correct. So, but they spoke promos because it was relevant to what they're saying. It made sense. It made sense to the, it made sense to what it is. If I'm a rapper, I can't freestyle. Why am I going to a battle? I'm not. Yeah, if I can't rap battle. <laughs> And I'm a songwriter. What are we doing? Like, no, and that's what Ricochet is. Ricochet can't freestyle. My man, that nigga to write your and write his material, which Will is not Smith? a bad thing. And yeah. I think that's what I just think. Sometimes the mentality of it is so, it's so, it's such a frown upon situation that people be like, "Nah, I'm good," or "Nah, I don't need help." And it was one of the things actually Trick Williams talked about uh, when he was on Chris Van Vliet. He talked he about his because huh? yo, because the interviews he's inspiring. I, we'll talk about that later. But I thought the interview was dope because well, when Trick mentioned he because he asked him, he's like, yo, like what's y'all what's y'all week look like? Like what does it look like for someone like you in NXT? Um, what's your week look like? And he was like, yo, we're in there training four or five times a week. 
Um, we have promo classes two times a week. Um, we have other things, you know, we can use, we can utilize, we have live shows, we have NXT. So it's just like, in hearing that, I was just <laughs> like, they really are starting to, cre- they're cultivating such a culture of having that assistance. And it's the one thing Ethan Page talked about too in that interview. He was just like, yeah, I'm in my late thirties. I'm at, you know, I'm, I'm at a, you know, I've had some years in the game, but to be around people like Norman Smiley or um or or, or um um Terry Taylor, like having actual people backstage check in on you and help you and and help you fine tune your craft. There's nothing wrong with that, and that's something that you know you don't you don't necessarily AW doesn't necessarily need like a performance center right now, even though they low-key do. But if you have so many people backstage that has so many different gems to offer and it's like it is it falling on deaf ears are people just not asking are people just not it is such a mixture of of it's like that whole like if you want to like as an individual you may be asking but then the next person that you in the match with ain't asking I so it's just point. like the so it's, it's, is, it's weird the difference is between Vince and Tony Khan is fans like to control everything around them and Vince was having promo classes way before the NXT. Way before that. If you heard stories where, like, yeah, we had promo class today, the Vince came up, blah, 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 I cut a promo mm-hmm. with him, blah, 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 blah. That's how I got put on. The thing about AEW is <coughs> a lot of you guys who's running it only does indies all their life. So their mindset is very independent wrestler instead of wrestling company. Mm hmm. So when you have a company is you always have different trainings. You always put people through this, blah, 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 blah. For example, if I want to do something different on my job, there's a train I have to go through it, either online or in person. Why do you think I write it? There was training modules I had to do every month because it was part of the training. Yeah, Mikey you, does training at his job. Right. You got to put in the money for these things to make your product better. And I get it. A lot of people probably had conversations with Tony, blah, 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 blah. They like what Vince do. But at the end of the day, when you study what Vince did, it revolutionized the whole game. Because you know why? You may talk shit about Vince. But Norman Smiley would not have a job if NXT wasn't around. A lot of wrestlers would not be working having these a legend contract if it wasn't because of Vince. Yo, when fact, I, I don't like how that... When I, I read... Vince, I'm sorry. Is I would put that W as a company. A lot of people would not be off of drugs if it was not for Vince making that wellness program. Well, he low key had to get that was a little forced by hand, but it did happen. <laughs> I will say it was a little forced by hand, but no, um, I absolutely agree. Um, can one of y'all pull up a uh, Wrestle Dream card real oh, hold on, quick? Hold on, hold on. We'll... I got you. Okay, we'll do the predictions real quick and then we'll start it off because yeah. Let me get the iPad forgot. real quick, Zola. But <laughs> but uh, but once again, um. Um, AW Wrestle Dream this Saturday, well, tomorrow in real life time. So, if you are in the Tri State area, come out to Legends and come watch. Um, I do believe you won't be able to buy it on Bleacher Report. I do believe their partnership has discontinued. So, I do believe you can purchase it on, I think, YouTube and also on payperview.com. So, just keep that in mind. Though it's very interesting that they discontinued that relationship with, Ble- with Bleacher, but that's either here or there. I think Bleach Report is going down, though, isn't it? I don't know. I, I I use Bleach all the time, so I don't know. That's how I get my sports news. <laughs> Cheap love for them, but that's how I get it. But um, I believe, I really, unfortunately, I do think it's like nine matches, and I'm just like, oh, my God. Hold on, I'm coming up. No, thank you. It's okay. Um, I'm trying to think. So yeah, right after Wrestle Dream this weekend, um, the next pay per view, um, NXT's Halloween Havoc at the end of the month, and then Saudis at the very beginning of November, where it's gonna be champion versus champion. Very interesting take. Um, and then we are on the road to Survivor Series. All right. Uh, yeah, I, Lord, I can't see this, but we gonna make it work. All right, I'll I'll, I'll read it. Um, no, I can see it. Oh, you can um, see it? Okay. We got uh, well, Swerve Strickland returns at Wrestle Dream in Tacoma, his hometown. Uh, we have Heyman, had um, Heyman Adam Page versus Jay White, the returning Jay White. Who do you guys have? I don't, why is that happening? The fuck? 
Uh, Adam Page winning. Okay. Adam Page, yeah. All right. Uh, we got Darby Allen versus Brody. Why the fuck is this happening? <laughs> Brody King. <can't... laughs> I'm gonna need Darby to win. Cause what the fuck? Darby's so definitely good. winning. Um, we got what's that? Is that the hologram nigga? Hologram versus yeah. the black um. Mortis. Black the beast. beast. The beast. Mo- Mortis. <laughs> the beast. Two out of three. Four. What? Why? Nah, why? that's gonna be a fire match. Why it's would gonna we be a good do match. that? Why would we do that on a nine pay per view card? That's outrageous. That has to go on first. That's outrageous. Uh, We got for the ROH World Championship uh, Mark Briscoe versus Chris Chris Jericho's out of pocket for this. But I I, I don't know. I I see Chris Jericho winning, unfortunately. It's crazy. Um, Who do you guys have? Chris Chris Jericho. Jericho. Okay. Um, we got for the AEW World Tag Team Titles, we got the Young Bucks versus uh, Hope Town Homies, a private party. Um, I really wish this wasn't happening because, like, I would want them to to win the belts. Like, like I would genuinely would want them to have that. They ain't winning that. Young Bucks. This ain't this ain't it. So, um, the Bucks retain. Unfortunately, um, uh, we got Jack Perry going against. Is that Shibata? Yeah. The nigga yep. with the brain shit. Um. Mm-hmm. I, I like his theme song, Fire. <laughs> um, I s- probably Jack Perry retains. Definitely retaining. Uh, we have for the women's AW Women's World Title, we got the hometown hero Willow Nightingale versus Mariah May. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really want Willow to win, but I hope Willow wins too. Me too. I really hope she does. Like I said before, after the whole Tony Storm, Mariah May is very blah. So. Hmm. Um, and then we have the triple threat for the is it the intercontinental? What what name? What is the Will Osprey title? The, all, the international, the international, international. Oh, okay, because I'll be like, ooh, buddy. Uh, we got uh, Rico Booty going against Will Osprey versus Takesha for the international title. Um, I really want Takesha to win. Um, and the only way I really see that is him pinning Ricochet, but. Mm-hmm. We shall see. What do you guys think? Um, no, nah, I see Will Ospreay holding it. Nah, yeah? I see. Nah, I see Rick Shea winning it. That's a, that's, I just you see Rico face. Booty winning? Oh shit! All right. Well, well that that'll probably honestly it probably may be the match of the night. I ain't gonna hold you, but mm-hmm. um, and then last but not least, the AEW World Heavyweight Title: Brian Danielson in his Moxley. hometown state going Moxley, against yeah. John. Motherfucking Moxley, and Moxley. unfortunately, I totally see Moxley winning. I mean, you can't not win and try to suffocate a nigga like that's just I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't see that being a thing. But, um, but once again, um, AW viewing party this Saturday tomorrow in real time. Um, at Legends will come out to support if you are not going to come. I well, we're not doing it. We're not doing. I'm doing Legends. It's not Legends, so there's no viewing party. No. Okay, I take that back, y'all. There's no viewing party. Don't come to Legends. Don't do nothing. <laughs> it's crazy because I wouldn't be able to make it anyway. So that that actually is hilarious. Yeah, I watch it then. All right. Well, um, okay, well we are wrestling. Uh, we are wrestling November eighth. Uh, we got some. We got shout out to Peter Rosado and the team over there. We are wrestling. Um, got some heavy pack matches coming up. Um, of course. Um, oh, oh, Mr. James, that's my friend. <laughs> um. Damn, mom, even though y'all should have won, but there's neither here nor there. Um, in the latter match, hot ass with the re- versus prolific. Why Don't did that guys. first of all wait? Hold on, go back to that graphic. Why does why does Dre look like he about to be in the match? <laughs> <laughs> facts, facts, stupid. Yo, um, Andre about to guys. be in the latter match. I'm about to text him that. Shout out to guy making the BW 500. Oh, good. I'm gonna need him to have a new picture. Oh, well, shout out to everyone on the list being recognized. Whether you like your position or not, just be blessed that you are recognized for nah, the great like things the that you do. I keep that later. They, they just don't like that because the guys feel like I get it to that later. I don't. No, know it's fine. It it don't, it's okay. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, any last words before we do sign off? Uh... Um. No, 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 everybody's good. Well, thank you yeah. guys for tuning in. I know it was in the middle of SmackDown, so if you do catch this on the on the re on the replay, please do. 
Uh, we should be back next week live and in color. Yes, yeah. no, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we'll do that. And then, um, well, everyone have a great weekend. Um, if you're going to be out and about, you know, just be safe. Um, right. As always, I'm Chanel from HR here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black. Hashtag Black Excellence. Hashtag We Are Out. Now I can go eat. Mm. Hold Bye. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What?